All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, time for game number five here at the Acer Team Story Cup. Spawning in the top right position as the Blue Terran player. Coming in from Quantic Gaming, the former TSL Terran, it is center. And spawning in the bottom left position as the Red Zerg player coming in from Team Liquid, it is Rhett. So currently guys, if you are just tuning in to the Acer Team Story Cup today, just a brief little uh, update, I guess, if you guys want to know what happened so far. Um, we kicked off with Apocalypse, um, taking a pretty nice, pretty nice win over Zenio, which just a pretty, it was just a really straight up game. Hellion Banshee, um, which was kind of cool to see come back, and I'm actually really interested to see what Center will do since the Hellbat nerf in Terran versus Zerg. But I, I, you know, of course, after that we did have Apocalypse um, <clears throat> taken out by Hero, and then Hero took out um, Treem. And then we just saw Center come in and even the score. So this game, this this series has been quite close. Um, this is a best of nine, so it is the first team to achieve five victories. So we had at least guaranteed three games coming your way. And with the way this series has been going, I wouldn't be surprised if this went all the way up to the final match. These teams both kind of, you know, they're kind of the cool things as far as Quantic and uh, Team Liquid go. Both teams are, you know, they're foreign teams with some some solid players. Not really any big tournament winners, uh, except maybe someone like TLO as of late. And even he's had some difficulty um, making it past that round of eight. But we also have uh, Quantic, which is, you know, it, some, some solid foreign players that don't really have any huge results recently. But um, definitely... Definitely has some good Korean players, and I think that's a big, a big thing that people, you know, kind of rec recognize both of these teams for is their Korean lineups. Um, as uh, as we get this game moving along, we will as well as a fast speed here for Rhett. Most likely going to be speed. He's not terribly cheesy. So uh, the lineups are very even. Um, I, I feel that the, sh the foreigner representation from Team Liquid is a bit stronger than the foreigner representation from Quantic. But so far, the Korean lineup seems to be favoring the Quantic team. Keep in mind, they still have Hyun um, that they can pull out. But Center being able to take out uh, Hero was a pr is a pretty big deal. Um, since uh, as far as the remaining Koreans go, Xenio was taken out earlier. Um, there's not too much. We could see Tasia come up in this match. It would be kind of cool to see. Um, we haven't seen some of the other heavy-hitting foreign players from Team Liquid, such as TLO. We haven't seen Snoot come in yet. Um, some of the more scary foreign players, I guess I should say. Um, so, Retz has kind of been on a bit of a downswing recently. We haven't seen too much from him since the first MLG where he had a decent performance. But, uh, getting back into this game a little bit more. Center going for the gas after the expansion. He is getting the reactor, the factory. But, you know, I, I gotta wonder, is this going to be another one of those... Is this going to be a Banshee play? Is he going to go for Hellbats anyway? Um... There's so many options, and that's I guess that's the kind of cool thing about StarCraft 2 is that Hellbats are still there's still there's still ways to use them. Of course, you could just get the fast plus one attack, and that actually still lets Hellbats two shot um, drones right now in the current state of the game. But there, the factory's done. Will we see the starport? Will we see a tech lab on this barracks? Things I want to know. I want answers. I want to know right now. Now these Reapers did a decent bit of poking, by the way. They got not too many kills. Two workers, which isn't bad, and a single zergling. But they're also providing that threat. And here we have the armory for center. And some people might say, Nathan, you know, Hellbats just got nerfed. They don't just straight up two shot drones. No, but they still get healed by medevacs. Hellbats are still really good. They still two shot zerglings. And against a player who decides not to open up with uh, roaches, Hellbat jobs are still really good. And Red's going to come up here, and he's going to see just this barracks, just this factory. He misses the starport and the armory. And the thing is, um, Center could easily show the starport and then just build a tech lab on the barracks. And that would be enough of a tell for Red to say, oh, well, it's probably going to be Hellion Banshee because Hellbat's got nerfed. You know, it's not what it, it's not what you'd expect, I guess, is the important thing um, to clarify. Not expecting the uh, 
the hell that play might be why it works out so well. I, I would like to see Sentry get a very fast plus one vehicle weapons before he starts anything at all. But he already has the first couple of Hellbats. He already has the medevac started. Um, I still would really like to see the plus one vehicle weapons, but I guess it's not going to happen. Uh, meanwhile, Rhett, he's just kind of, you know, he, he's doing his thing. He's going to play a little bit safe. He's getting up a spine crawler on the creep. But this is one of those weird things that can now happen because of, uh, you know, the way that you scout and react. There's no Roach Warren even on the field. Zergling's speed is done, but... It's possible that this Hellion Reaper forward pressure while the Hellbat drop moves in could do a lot of damage. And here the Hellion's just pressing forward. He's trying to just um, poke away, chew up as much as he can in the early phases of this game. And there goes the Hellbat drop. Another Metamac is on the way. More Hellbats are prepared. Um, but Stimpak is also coming in. And Center is going to move in towards the third base with his uh, Hellion Reaper force. And in the meantime, this Hellbat drop making its way over towards the natural so three shots to kill drones really isn't that bad you, you consider this about as powerful as a regular hellion drop as long as you get all the attacks off and here we go the hellbats landing letting rip and we can see they're still damn pr pretty damn good at killing off drones and center has done a lot of damage with that hellbat drop these hellions and reapers also trying to carry their own weight the spine crawler will uh, force this back but um, Center did a pretty reasonable amount of damage. You don't want to lose the Hellions, of course, since it does open you up to counterattacks. But Rhett's not really that kind of guy. Rhett doesn't even have a Baneling Nest in the field. He's getting up his Lair. He's getting his 1-1. One, one. Um, and Center, do we even have Engineering Bays yet? No, we should see those start up with the 4th Command Center any second now. Um, he could have tried to go for a big follow-up attack, which wouldn't be a terrible idea, as he does have major all of his Hellbats intact. And another th three Medivacs. Good chunk of Marauders. Stimpaks coming in. It does look like Center wants to go for a two-base push. Um, of course, he doesn't have a lot of units, so he's going to get the third command center. We should see him immediately go double engineering bay. He's going to fall behind in upgrades very fast if he does not get the engineering base right this second. Um, and there, well, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you listened to my casts. Well, I'm glad I have a delay so that you can't, but SCV is checking for a base in the top left area. Creep spreading for Rhett, the king of drones. But now we have a lot of speedlings coming out and Aspire. So Hellbats are still pretty good. They still two-shot Zerglings that don't have upgrades. Um, I think they actually two-shot Zerglings with plus one as well. Um, so this won't do, they can't really do terribly much. Now the Marauders have Stem. He can use these. He can try to focus down the Banelings. The Queens are focusing down the Medivacs um, as they do want to just pick those off. But oh, these Hellbats just wrecking face on these Lings. The Banelings are dead. There's still so many Hellbats. I don't think Rhett can stop this right now. He might lose this third base. Um, thankfully, the drones will get away, which is very, very nice. But this third hatchery will fall. This queen, I don't think it's going to finish either. And uh, there we can see, guys, Hellbats. They still kill everything. Um, so it's, yeah. The 1-1, one, one, though, is really late for center. Third command center's done. But now we see Rax on Rax. Finishing up, he's going to go straight into a bunch of reactors on these. And the Mutalisks are ready to come out. But so much gas has been spent on Banelings and uh, upgrades that we do not, we do not, we don't actually see any Mutas in production yet. He doesn't actually have enough gas to make that many. He can make four, which isn't a very strong number. I think he wants to have the Zerglings for the map control first. He wants to just put himself in a solid spot. Um, but, ooh, that Marine gets taken out. So the hatchery starts up in the top left side, and I think uh, Center might actually be aware of that since he did have the SCV here earlier. Um, but now we have the Viking moving around. Center's just trying to snipe off Overlords. Very smart play. Widowmine is going to take out the Ling that wants to block this base. And now we see the scans going up. Creep Tumors being picked off by Center. There's a good number of Lings and Bane Lings, but uh, the Hellbat Marauder Force is pretty strong versus this. Despite having that Spire, he hasn't been able to make any, any uh, Mutalists, and the Bane Lings chew through all of these Hellbats. This is a, a nice, solid pickup for Rhett, but he's still way behind. Um, he, as we see, 75 supply to 112. The first three Mutalisks are about to enter the fray, but 58 drones versus 65 SCVs. This is not the drone count that you would expect to have, or you expect Rhett to have at least. So we do have the third base now being saturated by center. He's got enough SCVs to immediately saturate the Widow Mines. Ooh, picking off a lot of these links. The SCVs going to try to run away, and the Marauders and Marines coming in to save the day, opening up that blam blam. And uh, yeah, Rhett does now have the third base once again. He really needs to, to keep this economy secure. He really, really needs 
more than anything to just get a stable setup, get his drone count up, and get a couple of minutes to just mine. He just wants to mine, 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 and um, spread his creep. But center's not giving him that opportunity. We don't mind Bird on this base. He's going to jump straight onto these, these, uh, these drones. And we actually have uh, the Mutalisks finally going to be able to, to do a little bit of help. Going to push this medevac back. The boosters are on cooldown. He's like, hit the gas, hit the gas. The medevac will fall. One guy jumps out at the last second. But unfortunately, a hail of razor blades pierce him. And now we have the Widow Mines lining up behind this force. Uh, center, just trying to keep him good spot. These Mutalisks actually picking off medevacs left and right here. Great pickups for Rhett, lowering this Mutalist count, uh, this Medivac count so well with his Mutalist, but he's going to lose his third base. And Center still has a lot of bio available. Ooh, Widow Mind's hitting those drones, and that's going to do a lot of damage to Rhett. We see a drop in the, t in the bottom at the same time, and that's actually not a drop. That is a hero Viking. He is, he's actually he's literally tilted, but he will die. Good effort. And Center's just going to retreat, and he will leave his mines here like scabs in the wound of his opponent, or on the wounds of his opponent. 2-2 on the way for center. Um, we didn't actually see any 2-2 upgrades come in for... Actually, yeah. Never mind. Rhett does have the 2-2. He actually got those really early. Also, that's actually surprising. Uh, he took so much damage. But actually really smart by Rhett to be able to, to keep his upgrades going. When you're in a situation like this, one of the only ways to come back is with something like upgrades or a really good Baneling Barrel Mine. I, even I was shocked that he was able to maintain those upgrades. Now, here comes another push, though. Will he be able to stop center? This is going to be it if center breaks Rhett here this game is over and he has more than enough to break him he just needs a miracle engagement right now the marauders running up and tanking absolutely everything focusing down these banelings now it's just marines versus mutalisks and zerglings and center will take that fight any day pressing in towards that bottom base Rhett's has been reached trying to retake base after base after base there's the gg and center will now tilt this uh match score in favor of quantic gaming three to two as we uh, advance farther on in this match here at the Acer Team Story Cup. So great play there from center, being able to just get really great splits. And in all honesty, we saw him use Hellbats. And I like this, you know, it's kinda, it's, no, it's not, that's not true. Uh, you know, what's kind of neat is to see that Hellbats, despite being nerfed, are still viable. They haven't been nerfed into Oblivion. They're still good, strong units that you can use in pushes, you can use in harass as tanky units. Sure, it takes three shots to kill a drone, but hey, if he gets on top of your drones, it, it, you know, you know if, you, if, you, if he gets you, it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, I guess that's what I wanted to say. Anyway, we'll get into the next game as soon as we can. Don't go anywhere, guys.